Hi everyone, we have arrived at the fourth section of the course, text classification. Things start to get more and more interesting now, since we're moving more and more into applying machine learning. We have already gone over the text processing steps in previous videos, but we'll start this section off with some prepping steps to the machine learning problems as well. After this, we'll have a quicker look at some popular text classification algorithms and apply one of them to a dataset in a coded example. Now I'll try and give you guys some pointers and rules of thumb as well before moving into a little section putting classifiers into production. To close things off, we'll have a look at how neural networks and deep learning can help with text classification. But first up of course, feature representation. Now since it's the first video of this section, we'll just have a glance at the text classification problem statement as well. Starting from this, we can lay out the various big steps that you'll typically find in a text classification project. After this, we'll spend some time on the first new step, feature representation, which is basically like, how can I transform this human readable text string to a machine learning readable numeric format? So, again guys, the problem statement is actually really easy. We want to label a document with one or more labels into classes, either binary or categorical. And we want to do so based on the features in the documents. Suppose the sentence below, where we want to classify the type of cuisine. Based on the present keywords like mozzarella, tomatoes, pasta, we can say that this recipe could be an Italian dish, with a certain degree of confidence of course. There are various ways you can think about this, probably many of you already know. First of all is the number of outputs, like does the classifier need to predict one thing, or multiple, like both the size and the magnitude of an earthquake for example. But here you can also think, doesn't it make more sense to have multiple single output classifiers? Second of all, the number of labels. Does each document only get one class or multiple classes? Like for instance in a news article, it can be both about economy and be foreign news. Thirdly, the number of classes. It could be a basic true false classifier versus multiple possible value classes. Now take the example sentence below. And suppose we want to classify this text again. Based on the words that appear, we can classify perhaps two things. The type of document and the originality of the document. The type of document can be a recipe. And the originality can be both French and Italian. So here we have like a multi-output problem. With each time a multi-class approach. And in one of them a multi-label as well. For text classification we don't have to start completely from scratch to try and integrate it previous sections we have already seen a few first steps required in a classification project. Namely, the data ingestion, the data pre-processing or the cleanup, and the document processing. What I understand as tokenization and lemmatization. Now, next up is splitting your data into preferably a training set, a testing set used for validation and fine-tuning of your model, and a final validation set used once and only once at the very end for final quality checking. Easy enough, most of you are already familiar with this. Now the next one however requires a bit more explanation. Feature representation. What is it and why do we need it? Well, think about it. Machine learning is math and language is language. So we first need to convert our words to a mathematical formulation, namely a vector. The easiest way to think about this is the bag of words approach. Suppose the two sentences here, I have a cat named Mr. Whiskers, and the cat and I have a very good relationship. Now suppose we do our job properly, and neatly tokenize and lemmatize the data, we then have the list of words as such, have cat name Mr. Whiskers, and for the second one, cat have good relationship. Since we need to be able to vectorize any possible sentence into a vector, the length of the vector is going to be the number of different words in all of our sentences. So each unique word is going to be at a certain index in this vector. In this case, in total, we have seven unique words. So each sentence of any given length, be it five, be it four, is going to be represented in a vector of length seven. So, encoding the first sentence gives us this vector, with of course a lot of zeros. And in this example it's still okay, but suppose we want to encode thousands of very different and very short sentences. 
you can imagine we have a very sparse vector. Basically a vector with a lot of zeros in it. And in a future video we're gonna tackle a problem which addresses exactly this. Now another problem is this. Suppose we have sentences with the words lily and rose in them, both being flowers. For many reasons they can be arbitrarily far from one another in the vector. Lily can be at index 2 and rose can be in index 100,000. Now even though they are quite similar actually. But the similarity cannot be deduced from the simple vector however. Now I'm running ahead of myself here but two of these aspects will be tackled upon once we get to the part about word embeddings. Now the smart ones among you will however immediately see the problem with this simple bag of words approach. It's not normalized. For text classification we might want to put perhaps more emphasis on rare words that appear in a lot of certain documents relative to others. We want to focus on what makes a sentence unique, which makes it easier for the classifier to learn the differences. In a way, this can be thought of as a form of feature engineering. Well, TFIDF is such a normalization technique, and a very popular one in NLP for that matter. It emphasizes exactly what we just described, using the formula below. I'm not gonna go too much into detail of the formula, there's a lot of neat articles for it, but we're gonna apply it in an example in just a minute. So a word vector normalized using TF-IDF or term frequency inverse document frequency is gonna be your input, at least for shallow learning algorithms, a lot of the times. 